Kara, Aloha, Satnam, Grand Rising, Grand Waking family. I am so excited to welcome you to the Watering Hole podcast. My name is Jilly, otherwise known as Water Priestess, and this entire experience. Just everything building up to this moment right now, I, <laughs> I'm just going to give you guys an intro, really starting out with who I am, why I'm here, and the intentions of this podcast. So this is the first one that I'm recording, such an honor, and today we have seen so much going on in the world So, so many different views, so many different opinions, so many different judgments. And so this space is a space of love and free energy and sovereign beings. So listening to my lens, I'm going to be sharing a bit more about the water lens with you guys and through my consciousness lens. So feel free to take what you want, leave what you don't want, really tune into your own water body. Really feel your own inner water body temple. It's free. You know, this this space is free. And to begin, <laughs> grab your waters, water vessel, cup of water, your beautiful water containers, and bring them to your heart. And we tune in. Every single one of these podcasts is going to have moments of singing. So really tune in in here, closing the eyes and just taking a deep breath in the nose. And out the nose. Thank you, water, for guiding us. Thank you, source. We are grateful to hold this space, this safe space container for this wisdom to flow through, for the freedom. And opening your water and taking a drink, maybe singing to your water like I do. So, Oh yeah, y'all are going to be hearing me gulping and drinking. We are here to drink these drops. So you might have heard me say drops. I've received drops or I'm drinking drops. What that means is that I'm I'm receiving downloads, uploads, memories, however you'd like to refer to them as. And when the drops come through, it oftentimes just opens up this web and it's like everything just starts weaving together, which is what I refer to as the water web. So for me, one of the intentions of this podcast is to invite people on and to weave our water webs together, to build our hydrogen bonds, our bonds with each other that build trust. So the bonds that we build together are built on trust. The foundational aspect of our living water relationships, eternal life relationships is built on trust. You know, so when I weave the water web, when others come in and I'm connecting with them, I call it flowing. I just love connecting with people and just flowing and connecting the drops and really bringing that inner chi, inner child in in play you know, as, as we drink. So many people know me as water priestess and I created a definition just for perspective. And what I invite everyone to do is to really see these as archetypes that are expansive, you know, really moving away from just a label and left brain and saying, oh, this is the only way that water priestesses are. Like this is just a definition to help us to really guide us into seeing the expansive side. So for me, a water priestess, what is a water priestess? 
She is the feminine aspect of ourselves connected to the source of life. Through her embodiment of purifying her sacred water temple, she dedicates her life to drinking from her own well of wisdom and communing with all states of water in existence. She is here to be a reflection, to remember, as she embodies fluidity while she walks her water path. So for me, <laughs> my water priestess path has been a bit odd. You know, it's it's definitely one that I'm going to be diving into and sharing more with all of you. And something that really started showing itself to me over the years is water consciousness. So you'll hear, hear me talk about water consciousness as well. So what is water consciousness to me through this specific lens is connecting the drops. It's a way of perceiving the interconnectedness of all things through the water lens. So when I speak of the water lens, it's so, so important to recognize if you're defining it at all, creating a dogma out of it. This isn't to say that this is the absolute truth and everyone has to follow the same truth. One of the wisdom drops of water is that water goes many paths, takes many courses, Water is source. And the reason why I refer to water as source is because as I started to really understand multiple religions, it all came down to this God source. And so when I refer to water as source, I'm really referring to drinking from the sacred source, the sacred source that we are, the living waters that we already are within us. So we are eternal living waters. And, you know, I've heard people say that there's no living water on this earth anymore. And it just, uh, it gets me because we are the living water. We are the eternal water. So water consciousness is a lens. Like I said, not a dogma, a lens, a way of perceiving the world. It is a way. The way of the water is the way of the water path. It is allowing us to awaken to what we already are right? We're remembering, better way of saying it. We're remembering that we are water and that water covers most of our planet and that there's actually different phases of water. And when we see the different phases of water and when we see the way that water acts and expresses itself and moves, we're watching a mirror of ourselves. So the more that we learn about water, the more that we remember about ourselves because we're remembering water, we're remembering ourselves. So through this water lens, we're really able to see the interconnectedness of all things. You've probably heard Mini Wachoni Water's Life, giving so much thanks to this wisdom from our indigenous brothers and sisters. This wisdom is alive still today, that water is life. So if water is life, everything, all things thrive off of water. How long can we go without water? Well, if you've ever done a dry fast, they say that three days, obviously there's tons of people out there that have done dry fast and even done 10 days without water. The, the point of this is that we can go 30, 40, 50 days without food, and we can only go a couple days without water. Water is the life force. Water is the current. And for me, when I started to see through this water lens everything started connecting so this water lens that I speak about a lot is a way of perceiving your reality and seeing the interconnectedness of all things water consciousness allows us to see s-e-a see our reflection our mirror reflection because water is a mirror so how did I even wake up to this where did this concept even come from I grew up on a beautiful ranch out in San Luis Obispo, California with a single mom. You know, at first we lived in a tiny apartment and then moved out to a ranch. And so I grew up pretty secluded and isolated. We're about 45 minutes from any any town. And this ranch, it for my experience, I really started communing with the land. And I was really socially awkward as a child, like, and as a 
teenager and as I got older, social constructs were really hard for me to comprehend because I was so isolated. My mom, she raised us free. This is what I like to say. Uh, what really comes through is that she raised us free. And what I mean by that is she was raised Catholic. And so by the time she had us, she wanted us to have our own experience with religion. And she didn't want us to, you know, be indoctrinated into one. And she didn't want to push her beliefs onto us in that way. So for me, I just grew up so open. You know, I had an aunt and an uncle that were gay. I, my mom was super androgynous in herself. Those of you that grew up with single moms, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it was like these roles weren't really uh, programmed into my construct. And so as I got older, I was just open. You know, I was learning about different religions and going to churches with different of my friends. And I was just open. And as I got older, I really started to go into the dark path, if you will. And, you know, my family has always been pretty psychic. We've talked about it in my lineage on my mom's side, and I didn't know my dad growing up. And so a lot of this comes from my mom's side. And we're also Native American, Spanish, French, German, African American, and a little Middle Eastern. So the majority of my lineage is Native American. And so my ancestors were on the land that I grew up on way before the Spanish came over and domesticated. And this is San Luis Obispo, California. So there's missions everywhere. And I remember being younger and my grandma saying, like, your ancestors were here before the missions. And there's books from, like, the 1400s of our ancestors getting married in these books. We have a huge family book of all of these baptisms and records and everything. So for me, it's been this mystery. And as I got older and I started going through the darkness, uh, I started drinking more. Like I mentioned before, we were really isolated. My childhood was definitely uh, chaotic, to say the least, without getting into too much detail. There was definitely abuse and um, just aspects of the deeper human conditioning that expressed itself through my lineage and one huge aspect of that was solitude and not letting anyone in everything was a secret keeping everything to ourselves you know that sort of thing and so as I got older I started drinking and I also had ADHD and I was on bipolar medication as well and by the time I got into college I was pretty much in a deep dark place and all I knew was to survive and I moved out at 16 the home life wasn't resonating in that benefiting me in the highest path and as I moved out I went straight into college uh, city college and I got my preschool teacher permit so I was I was a preschool teacher a nanny work with kids work with children with autism I had a somebody in my family who had Tourette syndrome, so I was pretty intrigued with the brain in itself and psychology. And so I transferred to university, mind you, getting myself through school. I never got any loans. I was working ugh, just so many hours a week and partying and just everything. And I was really depressed all throughout that time. And I started developing these ovarian cysts that were cancer. And... When I found that out, the doctors were telling me that I wasn't going to be able to have children and that this is, you know, you're going to have to get the surgery and these antibiotics and these medications and all of it. And I was scared. But again, my programming was keep everything a secret. You know, I didn't have a community. I didn't really have anyone. And at that time, I was drinking like hardcore, blacking out on weekends, Uh, always safe though there's for some reason I always made it home and in my own bed and uh, blessings to the guidance there Um, I developed these cysts and so right around that time my friend at the time was like hey I really feel like you should try this water my friend told me about it and it might help you heal and I was just like okay like this water you know water can't heal it's just water it's you know And I had another friend, which I used to work with children with autism at a facility. And she was like, you know, I heard about that water. I'm pretty sure it works. And so, you know, moving through some resistance and I finally tried it. And for three weeks straight, you guys, I bled. I had my menstruation 
and my body completely detoxed. It was like just something turned on in me. And by the time I went in to get my laparoscopy, my cysts were completely gone. Completely gone. By the time I got the surgery, the doctors were like, what's going on? What did you do? You know, asking me all these things. And for me, I didn't know. I wasn't even warned that I was going to detox on the water. I was just kind of like, I'm pretty sure it's this water. And the doctors were like, no, this can't work. It's a scam. Alkaline water doesn't work. All of these things. And I was just like, okay, I'm confused. Pretty sure I'm living proof of this. And the doctors don't know, you know, anything about water. And this sparked my curiosity. At this time, and I say this in the most like forgiving way for my, you know, past earlier self in my life. Um, I thought I was stupid. I really thought I was stupid growing up. I struggled in school and I just daydreamed. If you resonate with that, I just nothing. I just, yeah, daydreamed and disconnected, disassociated. Like I said, I had ADHD. So I was struggling in college so so much and barely getting by copying people's homeworks cheating on tests like just being real with all of you that's the truth and so right around this time when everything came to this convergent point um I started waking up to my body and as a child I had pneumonia and I was sick a lot my grandma used to say that she was always worried about this cough I would have in my chest whenever I got sick and I was like okay if my body just did that, can I get off my meds? Can I get off my ADHD medication? Can I get off my anxiety medication? Like all of these things. And secretly, you know, I was addicted to it, you know, playing the victim and just kind of identifying with my medication. And if you resonate with this, or if you're, if you've ever been on bipolar meds or anything like that, it can be a pretty chaotic life. And I would say that mine was, uh, handled that's the best way I could say it and I knew how to fake it I knew how to numb everything I just you know I was really deep in the medication and so my journey I wanted to learn about this water and come to find out that I could actually start a business and share this water with people which I didn't know about before and right around that time I was really really just like I want to drop out of college I just couldn't do it and so I dropped out and I started my water business and I started learning about water I started learning about the system and the machine and what it does and how my body healed itself and the hydrogen and living water so if you heard of this water the Kangen water also pronounced Kangen water so Yeah, man, that was the beginning of my journey. And when I started studying water, it was all left brain. Science, proved facts, um, so many studies. And when I started to really realize that a lot of people didn't know about water, that's when I decided to uh, leave society and go to Japan to see where the Kangen water was made. I wanted to just get out, honestly. I was running and escaping a lot of my pain, too. And um, so I went to Japan, got my backpack. I have ne- I had never traveled by myself. I was just so over it. And so I got my backpack, and I went to Okinawa, and I got to see where the machines were made. I got to see the factory and meet people from all over the world, all over the world. And I would just ask questions about water and I would just always be so curious of like, whoa, this water is healing water and it's alive. It's real. And the way that the Kongen systems are made is that they replicate the earth's natural ionization process. And so it replicates the earth's miracle water, the most potent water in the world. It's known as living water, even though some people say that there's no living water here anymore. Um, you know, the, the fountain of youth actually exists. There's people who line up to get this water. And so when I started to really attune to that, it was like, boom, my ancestors just came online. It was like water protector. I was getting all of these drops. And I, again, it was, again, I grew up openly spiritual. I also had a cousin who was Uh, educating me on chakras and energy when I was a teenager. So I was pretty open, you know, and I met somebody and Wade Lightheart is his name. And he was Mr. Universe and he was vegan. And I met him in Okinawa and we just like, he was like, wow, you could be an Oracle. And I was like, what this, 
what is this? And so the spiritual side of the water started awakening inside of me. And I really felt my own waters rise. And then from there, I was like, there's no way I can go back to society. There's no way that I can just integrate back into that, you know, rigid way of living. And so I traveled from Okinawa to different parts of Hawaii and then down to Southern South America and like the southern parts of Peru went all throughout the Amazon, um, went to Machu Picchu, went and visited Iquitos and uncovered plant medicine. And before my travels, I had experienced uh, psychedelics one time and then DMT one time. So yes, I do have a psychedelic background, although this isn't the core of my work. It is a part of the story, though. So because I was so open before, I feel like my consciousness was already pretty open to it, to psychedelics in that way. So when I was in South America, uh, I had a plan to do ayahuasca with my partner at the time. He ended up not coming with me and it was just this whole thing. (laughs) And so here I find myself in South America and then I make my way through Ecuador studying water. So I would go to the water sources and I would test it with all my little gadgets that I had. I had an ORP meter, I had pH drops, I had a TDS meter, and then I also had a little water structuring device and I just started testing water and really communing with these different waters from sources. Sometimes they were hot springs, but most of the time it was just, you know, spring springs that people would get their water from. And when I was in Ecuador, I tested this water that was a negative charge, which means that it has a ton of antioxidants in it. It was alive. And when I was testing it, you guys, water started talking to me. (laughs) Water started talking to me. And that is, it's the, yeah, that's just how it happened. And she started, I heard a woman's voice when I was meditating near the spring. And it was just like consciousness, the water that you're drinking is consciousness the frequency uh it's raising your frequency the vibration of it the structure of it it's alive you're here to here to wake up the world to water and I kept getting that message wake up the world to water wake up to water wake up to water and before that I had already pretty much like built a team started sharing the water so my business was growing but I struggled when I came back where I was receiving all these spiritual experiences with water and channeling water, or so I thought. (laughs) I'll get there in a second. So I was channeling water, and I was going to these sales and marketing seminars, and uh, I just struggled. It was all manipulation. It was all persuasion. It was all build your business this way and that way and really left brain, and I just, yeah, I struggled. And those of you who know the human design, which is a part of, the illusion. A lot of people um, uncover the human design. And what I mean by that is just one layer of ourselves. So I don't live a victim to my design. I embrace my design. And part of my design is I'm a quad R, which means I'm a right, 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 right brain. So we function so differently. And I really did struggle when I came back. And after going to all these sales seminars, um, you know, I connected with a, another leader who helped me a lot in the business. He is a phenomenal mentor. His name is Colton Achave. And our wake movement now, if you guys know about us, we work with his group as well. Race to Freedom is their movement called R2F. And so for me, when I came back, the thing is, though, is that he he had his own thing and I was really getting all the spiritual drops and I was like, all right, I'm going to do it this way. I'm just going to start sharing. And so I really started sharing on a blog and building my social media up and just sharing. And I got so much resistance. I got so many projections. This was right around the time that I, I just really, really genuinely wanted to share what I was receiving. And then also because this whole wake up to water thing. And then I realized there's a new way birthing. There's a new way of doing business birthing. And then the water codes started coming into my business. Hydrogen bonds, uh, getting to know each other, not lying to each other anymore. Really sharing our businesses based off of our trust and our bonds and our connection. And that's what that's what network marketing is to me 
And a lot of people have negative connotations about network marketing and MLM. So, you know, for me, I was just like navigating this seat. It was just so, yeah, it was a lot of projections. I triggered a lot of people. I've had people literally tell me that I'm only doing this for profit and that I'm scamming people. And it was tiring. It definitely was draining. But something, something was happening. And I slowly started realizing that I was being trained because all I was doing was really sharing my story with the water, sharing the drops and sharing the codes. And I was getting this resistance and I slowly started learning this, this wisdom from water. Yes, it is the path of least resistance because it always finds a way, right? Yes, it is the path of path of least resistance because it always finds a way, although there's blockages in the way. Sometimes there's dams with a flood of water behind it. So I started realizing that it's not about running from the resistance and it's about leaning into the resistance. And I started, I started leaning in and I knew deep down, I was like, this, this, me, this is there's something here, you know, like there's something here. And that's when I felt like the fire really started awakening. And when my fire really started awakening, I was like, you know what? I'm going to persevere. It's like this warrior archetype just came online. And I had this moment with water where I was like meditating near this spring. And It was like the water just flipped the script on me and was laughing at me. And she was like, haha, like you actually think that I'm outside of you still. You actually think that the water is the most amazing substance because, you know, I was just like, water is miracle. Like I was all about the water. And I had this moment where I realized I am the water and everything that I learned from water it was like I am that I am so if you guys know the Moses code it's not just I am that I am it's I am that I am and what I mean by that is I realize I am that I am water oh my goodness I am source I am God and it was like this unification this perfect cohesion happened and I saw water as this mirror of myself and when I saw water as a mirror of myself I feel like that's when I really started seeing my gifts and I started letting myself see my gifts that's a the better way to say it because I didn't necessarily let myself see my gifts before and I resisted them for a long time and I went through a lot of self-sabotage in my business and depression and just ugh. I, I came from scarcity, you know, nobody in my family showed me how to build a budget or how to invest or really manage my abundance and, you know, all of it. So for me, when this moment happened of realizing that I am water and water is me, all of the wisdom went within my heart. It was like everything went within me. It was like a cla- It was like I was turning inside out and that is when I really started to see the merge happen to where instead of my business over here and water priestess over here, it was the same. And the merge started happening. And when the merge started happening, that's when everything started manifesting. Our community started manifesting. Other people were getting the water codes. Other people were absorbing it too. And it was so beautiful to connect with other people. And you know, through my path, I feel like because I talk about business and because I talk about money and I talk about abundance and I talk about, it's all the same, um, just (sighs) triggering things for some people, you know, and, and especially in the priestess community, is this allowed, you know, is this God's work and all these things. So on my path, Uh, I really started to see myself deeper. And once that really started anchoring in, that's when I started attracting other people. It was like my foundation was finally here. And that's when my partner decided to start building my business with me. My life partner now, Chris O'Brien, he is love. We are love together. And um, I've known him since college. So he knew my dark days. You know, we met when I was 19 and I'm 30 now. 
So we've known each other for years, over 10 years, and we've been in business together for about five years now. I've been in this water business for about almost eight years. So when he finally joined, it was like, okay, something's happening here. You know, this is birthing. And when he and I got together, he really allowed me to mentor him. And he in the human design is a quad L, left, 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 left. And so you can just imagine like we're so opposite in the ways that we process things. And I have this flow part about me as I just flow a lot and also structure. But the questions he would ask me really allowed me to see myself deeper and duplicate what I had done to help him, you know, reach that success. And so he really showed me my leadership. I feel like Chris... <clears throat> yeah drink to that <laughs> Chris oh, I love him so much you guys it's he's my best friend he's like we're we're playing the game of life together and you know whenever I tune into us we're just like two little kids figuring it out as we go sometimes triggering each other sometimes figuring it out but we we really do we're builders we're builders and that's the intimacy in our relationship is the way that we have come together to build. And then we've been together for going on three years now. So friendship first, business second, and then, the, you know, the unification happened. And during my process of building this movement with him and really putting this message out there, I've gone through trials and errors, you know, and there are people out there that see what we're doing and still think that we're scamming people and that's totally fine which that's why I am excited for this entire podcast so that I can let everyone in so that there's no assumptions anymore you know really letting you guys into the in-between of how this was all birthed and through that when our community started coming to us, I mean, the reflections, our wake community, the magic, the synchronicities, the water in itself, you know, we're all living proof of Kongen water. And I know some of you listening might have your own opinions of Kongen water, and that's okay too. I'm not going to sit here and convince you of anything, just sharing the story. So thank you for being open and just thank you for listening, you know, thank you for listening to our story and really our expansion now because I found that once our community started birthing water consciousness it was like we created a structure for water consciousness to just boom flood birth and I started understanding it more based off of the reflections in our movement you know all of our leaders coming and Kevin and Kira and Lauren and Jen and Raul and Connor and everybody when I started to see this, one of the biggest moments for me is when my sister Layla, one of our Waker leaders as well, we started coming together in our water ceremonies, in our water activations that we were hosting. And it was like, whoa, you've worked with the water in this way. I've been working with the water in this way. And it just started weaving itself, really just started weaving itself. And then as I started to really see what was going on in 2020, you guys, right around the time that quarantine began, our business just blasted off. It was like, boom, and we grew threefold. And I really went through the growing pains. I hired two assistants. I was like, how do I duplicate systems? You know, all of it. And so through that expansion last year, it was really cool to see just how much resonance was happening and source. I say this a lot. Source creates the course. So a lot of the time, I don't even really know what I'm saying until it fully weaves together. So sometimes I'll get a drop and I'm like, hmm, that could be something later, you know? And so that's why I love sharing this lens with you all, because I'm not sitting here telling you that this is the only truth and that, you know, there's only one way because there's so many courses to source and the way that water has shown me and there's a book called water Co the water code by rainy marie Hiley, which oh, such a lovely woman she sent us signed books of hers and basically there's a concept called blending your consciousness and for me the way that i received this drop was through hum humility and 
for me to be able to accept other people's lenses on water, you know, because I was so, I uh, just, Kangen water to me is so beautiful and alive and secret and like eternal. And I know that other people don't agree with that. And so for me, I really brought to this place of compassion. And when the water brought me here, I was like, whoa, okay, I accept you. We are all in different streams of consciousness. And so when you can see the different streams of consciousness that everybody is in, you just see one big ocean. And when you can accept that other people are in different streams, you can see everything as truth. And because there's so much in our society, you know, especially in the spiritual community, there's so many timelines and what is truth, what is not, what is false light, what is real, what is this, what is that? What the waters were showing me is just source, you know, it all comes down to your source within yourself. Drink from your own well. Drink from your own well before you outsource that. And so source, this guidance with me is, yes, I say source and I'm, I'm saying God, I'm saying us, I'm saying water, all in the same, because that's how I was guided to this oneness consciousness. Now, here's the paradox of the oneness consciousness through the water lens is that, yes, we are all one, although water consciousness allows us to respect the individual consciousness as well so like I said we're in all of these different streams and within all of these different streams we're able to fully accept each other because we're one ocean we're not bypassing and just going oh we're all one we all have to be the same you know what I mean so it's like there's a compassion that just pours in and I I say compassion meaning come past ions and one of the biggest things for me is that when I was uh realizing <laughs> that my heart was the source of it all. I mean, sovereignty. I was such a big empath. And a lot of the time I was so affected by so many people that I would hermit, you know, hermit and stay away from people. And once I started really seeing through the water lens, I was like, okay, I'm free energy. I'm nothing can stick to me. I'm hydrated. And when we refer to hydration spelled H I G H dration, that is a higher hydrated path, a lens to see the, the, the lens of your life. So because water consciousness can see all lenses and can respect all lenses, and instead of, you know, telling each other what to do, which is what I call an electron donor, we can have compassion and it comes back to our source and we respect their source, even though it might, we might be drinking from different sources, different streams, you know, Although at the same time, seeing the one, the one water is what I call it, the one water. So seeing these different streams really allowed our movement to have just a diverse collection of people. That's really what we are. And some of us are Christian. Some of us are Buddhist. Some of us are just open. Some of us follow the Christic teaching. Some of us really allow ourselves to embody our own path. It's, it's a unification of all of these different layers and through that the wisdom and the weaving I am so excited to have our wakers on this because for me in my everyday life I get to let you guys in on the magic that's happening and the flood of love that is real and for me I, I know sometimes people from the outside they'll be like you're all about love and light it's not all about love and light and I'm like Yo, I know that. I get that. I've been to the underworld. I've faced that. I see that. I continue to see. I'm, I can see, right? We live in this reality right now. It's February 2021. Look at everything that we went through in 2020. I see that. The water lens isn't bypassing and just saying, oh, everything's love and light. Everything's love and light. It's seeing. It's meeting ourselves where we're at. And doing what we can with what we have. That's as simple as it is. Seeing through the water lens allows you to see divinity everywhere. See divinity everywhere. Even in moments where you perceive that divinity isn't everywhere. It is everywhere. And the beautiful part about that for me, when I was seeing the divinity everywhere, I was seeing source codes weaving 
in the web. And this past weekend, I was uh, flowing with Layla and his sister Kelly, and we were talking about how Source speaks. Source speaks. So for me, Source started speaking through this water lens, and I started seeing everything as eternal. I started seeing love come alive. Love come alive everywhere. And because I could see love come alive, my whole life is so sacred. So, so sacred. We are so sacred. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. And when I was able to see that, I was like, this is so wow. It, it, it was, it's, it's like source. It's, it's pure source. And so when we're seeing through this water lens, we're recognizing what's going on in our society and we're seeing the divinity with it and all at the same time, not bypassing, you know, and just saying, Oh, everything's love and light. There's a lot of wisdom. I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of perspective on the darkness and the way that I see what false light is. I'll be sharing with you guys those lenses. Uh, and we're going to be diving deep. We're going to be diving deep. And what I love about the synchronicities with this specific name of the watering hole is that <laughs> we all come to the watering hole to drink. No matter what species you are, no matter what color your hair is, it's kind of like this place where we can all commune together and drink together instead of compete for the water and scarcity, you know, and it's a eternal life. It's the eternal fountain. And when we can come together like this, we really start to open up the, our own wisdom and share that with each other and just uh, feel so good. And so the name of this was the watering home. Where did I get that name? Within for me, eternal life codes, I, I really recognize that saying a wormhole was like, you know, you go down the wormhole and it kind of drains and you get addicted to kind of like how people get addicted to sp conspiracy theorists, uh, theories. And so for me, I change it to a watering hole. And so the water hole for me is a hydrating experience. Uh, it's, it's not a draining experience. It's a eternal life code where w we drink eternally from ourselves, from our own source. And so this watering hole, I spelled it W-H-O-L-E at first. And I was like, I don't know if y'all are going to get that. I don't know. Like, this is a pretty deep code. It has so many layers to it. And so I changed it to watering hole. And when I announced the podcast, I announced it as the watering hole. And then a few people commented and was like, wait, watering hole, like wholeness. And for some reason, I was like, this is what a water priestess is. And for me, again, going back to the beginning of this, letting go of labels and archetypes. This is just words that describe an expression. Um, and I say that because after I came out with this, some people were like, oh, you're just in your ego and you're just making another title. And I'm like, y'all are just in your left brain. And if you just get in the right brain, allow me to create and express. You ain't got to take it, you know as a label, um, I started realizing that this is a path of wholeness, the watering whole, becoming whole, being whole. And that's something that I teach about in a lot of the events that I host in my Merchant Mermaid Intensive and a lot of courses is that we are already whole and that when we are already whole, we begin to see that what we want and what we desire is already here. And now it's just about embodying that, really anchoring that into the here and the now. So it's a really grounding aspect. And as a water priestess, one of the main parts of this wholeness for me is when fire and water merged for myself, death and life merged. So last year, a little backstory to this, last year, my partner's father passed away. And my best friend had her baby, Lily. So Layla had Lily and my partner Chris's father, Tim, passed away. And his dad passed away right before Lily's baby shower. And so we were experiencing death and rebirth at the same time. And I went through a really big just drop, flood of love moment where everything just connected, where by the time his funeral, his memorial, 
uh, was able to be held because of everything going on. We weren't allowed to, you know, have a certain amount of people was literally the weekend of Lily's birth. So when his father passed, it was her baby shower. And then when she was born, it was his memorial. So I was experiencing death in life at the same time. And that's when the eternal code started really flowing through about life is eternal. And there really is no death, meaning end all be all. You know, they we come home to the heart. And this was a pretty big initiation for me to go through this and to hold space for my partner. So just honoring that process and just honoring our ancestors. Thank you for this guidance here because that's what the entirety of this watering hole encompasses is eternal life. And to realize that death is an illusion and there's lots of us that are scared of death and that's okay. And when we really start to see the wholeness and the restoration of source and the hydration and the, all the little dehydrated cracks of our lives. That's what this is. That's the intention of this to hydrate. Oh, so good to drink and to return to wholeness. And on this podcast, being very intentional with it. You know, it took me a while to even record this as my first one because the crystallization definitely definitely had to occur and this being the first one really setting the tone just offering this love and this clarity so that you guys know the backstory and how I got here and how all of this is birthing so thank you mahalo satnam kara family I wish you all so much water in the flood of love